Innovative drugs show a promising future in lupus therapy, but progress is slow. That's according to Dr. Maureen McMahon, a rheumatologist at UCLA. In an interview at the annual Perspectives in Rheumatic Diseases Conference, she told us about the current approved drug Benlista and what to expect down the line. As we're getting more experience with the drug, we're finding uh, a little bit um, uh, better which patients will actually do well in the drug, which patients we should use the drug in, getting a little bit more comfort and a little bit more experience with the drug. There's a little bit more information about the drug that's been published um, from the clinical trial data and from the open label um, extension trials. Um, so there's up to date uh, four year open label extensions uh, with Benlista. And uh, that's just giving us a little bit better profile that there's no additional safety concerns that weren't already raised in the clinical trials. Um, so that's reassuring. Um, there's also a paper published that looked at patients from the clinical study who had positive double-stranded DNA antibodies and low complement levels. And in those patients, um, patients who had low complements and double-stranded DNA antibodies when they entered into the clinical trials, um, they seem to have an even better response to the drug. Um, so I think as we're getting more experience, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to, for us to find which patients will really benefit from the drug. They've certainly been used for a long time, but as time goes on, we're realizing um, more and more uh, just how important they are. Um, Antimalarials are not a medication that um, is going to work quickly or you know, have a blockbuster effect for your, for your patients feeling better than the day after that they take them. But I think as time goes on, we've realized um, from large cohort studies that patients who are on these drugs are less likely to develop damage over time from lupus. And of course, that's very important for all of our patients. We've never had a good understanding of exactly how hydroxychloroquine works or other antimalarials work in lupus, um, but in the last couple of years there have been a lot of papers that have really shown that perhaps one of the main mechanisms um, by which hydroxychloroquine and other antimalarials are working is um, by affecting the toll-like receptors, um, which have been shown to be a cause for active lupus. Um, and by working on toll-like receptors and ultimately reducing interferon alpha, um, it's thought that that may be one way in which these antimalarials are giving us benefit in lupus. A perfect lupus drug would, of course, decrease the rate of lupus flares. Um, would decrease the amounts of corticosteroids or hopefully eliminate the, the need for use of corticosteroids in lupus patients. Um, and not only would it treat um, some of the major manifestations in lupus, like kidney disease, um, but I think that some of those symptoms that are the hardest to control and the hardest to, um, but yet can have the biggest impact on patient lives, such as fatigue, um, overall feelings of malaise. Um, if a drug could treat all of those things and be safe, that would be an ideal drug. Hopefully we can take what we've learned from the failed clinical trials and from the successful clinical trials um, and also what we're learning uh, in the laboratory and move forward and hopefully find better treatments for all lupus patients. So hope is on the horizon. We just have to keep trying and keep striving. With IMNG Medical Media, this is Francis Correa.